How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and today we are going with my deck profile for Black Broly which I took to the webcam locals last Friday and had a lot of fun with. If you did want to check out the gameplay you can either go back to my Twitch and watch the VOD to see the whole stream or if you just want to watch the gameplay check out my upload from Monday which just put up the games showing the three games we played because it, uh, it was a best of one pre-side with three rounds because we only had seven players. But it was a lot of fun, and this deck is quite fun. It used to, it went from essentially being an unplayable, terrible, terrible leader to actually being something useful and playable with the anniversary box support. Because if you didn't know, we got the anniversary box of something we get almost every year since the game's beginning, I think, or maybe the, year, the second year after it started. And it the anniversary box essentially gives support to older archetypes. To give them, like, give them a little bit more if they were lacking, to kind of make them a bit more playable, a bit more usable in the current in the meta at the time. And in the current one, like Black Broly got two bits. He got a direct support in its Z leader, and he got indirect support in its um in a card for all Broly decks being the Z battle card. And those two cards together made this deck a lot more playable and actually decent and it's actually got a strong push now which is quite cool through the Z lead like the Z lead actually gives it a massive massive boost and yeah and what uh, after seeing the support I wanted to give it a try see what I can like what I could come up with and like try it out because it seemed quite interesting because this card was like a standalone promo leader that had no support just come out as a standalone promo leader that didn't do anything really or to have any actually go with it and now slowly getting a little bit of support you even had a card in the TP that we got back, I think a couple of sets ago, which isn't even great. It's terrible card support, but it's slowly getting support. And I think it's even got some indirect. He's got a a never card that can kind of help it in the upcoming set, set 19. But before we do get into the deck list and go over, feel free to like the video if you do enjoy my content. Also, comment down below if, if there's any questions about the list, any suggestions, or any you want to get a bit of discussion going. I'd like to take part in that. And as well, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It keeps you updated with my videos as and when they drop. And if you click the notification bell, you get alerts as when they do drop. And we're coming up close to 500. We're getting there slowly. We're almost there. And when I do that, I'll be detailing what I will do when I get to my main goal of getting to 1,000 subs, which you'll want to know. And also, we'll start a giveaway because we do one every 100 subs. So without further ado, let's get into the video and check out the list. So, Black Broly. Um... It's an it's not like it's not a very good leader. Like you want to awaken as soon as possible because on the front side, all you do really is neg yourself. You don't really plus. You can destroy like even when you're um, using it against your opponent as well, using the effect, you're negging yourself, and your opponent's not really losing anything because of the effect, which I'll read now. So its auto is when this card attacks a leader card, you may choose one card from your life place in your drop area. If you do so, place up to three cards from the top of your deck in your drop area. And your opponent chooses one card in the hand and plays in the drop area. That isn't great because you got attacking a leader, which means you're limited. If they if they start putting up a board, and you want to clear it. You're not going to be getting any use of the, of the lead to um, attack into the battle cards or the unison. So you got to attack a leader. It's one of those old ones that require the leader attacks that actually gains that you do something. And not only that, but you're also critting a life. You're choosing a card from your life and putting your drops. So you're not getting anything, unlike other leaders and other things that normally take a take a life and add to hand. This one crits the life, which is is terrible straight from the get go. So you're not only you're self awakening, but you're not gaining any advantage from it, which is very, very bad. And the only benefit of this is that you get to place up the top top three cards in your drop. So you get the mill yourself, which triggers some cards in the deck, as we'll see. And then you get make your opponent discard. And the discard's pretty relevant because when you're attacking to the lead. You're making this card one, but since you're attacking into the leader, they're going to be taking the damage if they're not awake and want to awaken. So that way they can, and they basically lose a card from hand, but they replace it with life, and they're closer to awakening. And while you are as well, you've not gained anything where they've not they've not lost anything, and you've not gained anything. You've more lost something. The only like decent thing about the front side is his awaken, which, which is when your life is four or less. You draw two cards and flip over, so you gain two cards, which is good for this deck because you can't you know, like sometimes struggles with low hand size. So getting those cards to actually give you more options is quite nice. And then when you're on the front side, well you're on the back side, sorry, on the awaken side, you now have an update to your auto, so now you actually gain advantage, and you now activate main to help with board clear as well. So with the auto, this is where like this deck can't be really, really played, like can't really be played um, 
mono black because of his ulto where when this card attacks you draw a card then you may choose one of your non-token and non-black battle cards and place it in the drop if you do that you get the cho your opponent choose one card in your hand in their hand sorry and place it in the drop area so essentially now you at least now you get to swing and draw one that's good every leader should have that in some way you're gaining advantage in some way and it has to be through draw it could be as long as it gains advantage it does something useful and in this case it swings to draw and it's just swing anything so that's perfect can bring it in line with most generic leaders which just swing anything draw a card and you can also sack off one of your uh, battle cards to make him discard a card as hand so you still have the discard off the effect just now you've got a sack off rather than mill your deck and create your life you've now got a sack off on your battle cards but it can be a token it can be black so it means you've got to play a never color in it so it means you can't you have to play a never color in this deck and annoy and the best thing that goes with hand control in the game is green since one of its main like characteristics is a hand control deck like a lot of the green a lot of green cards in the game have discard effects and as well as that it's just grateful for like control with destruction as well and that comes to our actual main which is a nice little one and once per turn you choose one card in your hand place in your drop area so basically discard a card choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it so you've got a nice little removal built in which is nice just to help remove things so you don't have to worry about attacking into everything and it's KO any battle card you just can't ignore a barrier which is uh which is fair enough and that is the basic the leader so it's not great like uh there was the era of um what's it during the unison warrior series of uh black saiyans being very strong we're starting off with the vegex lead we have the support come for that for all um black saiyans things slowly going for the first few sets support mainly for black saiyans to do well but then the ban list came about a few like a couple of sets ago to kind of neuter the big package that every black saiyan deck was playing so they've kind of dropped off and black is now probably one of the worst color like worst performing colors in the game at the moment like uh which is a shame but this is a nice little one and this was the worst one out of them because all the rest of them did if you were thinking about playing black saiyan you wouldn't think to play this this black brawler you think to play something else it gains a lot better advantage and does a lot more but now with this support this actually has something to do without just focusing on black like uh, the black saiyan support which is really nice and go for a fun little um control deck so that is the leader so it is pretty nice and there is the z leader which i will actually quickly go over the z lead uh, before we go and have a look at it, it won't come off it so we can go through the list at straight away so the z leader is a 30k double strike base so 30k double strike is really really good and the way to bring it out is you need to be at four or less life on your awakened side and be your turn you have to pay two and send two cards from your z energy to your drop to play on top of it so just two energy and sending two cards from your z energy to drop being your turn for less life which is what you're trying to work to anyway you're trying to awaken as soon as possible and it's there is it's out as early as turn two as long as you charge twice which is not too difficult to do and then you can be a double strike um 30k and you're normally going to want to drop this when you attack with your lead so you can get the draw off your lead first and maybe even the discard and then drop this on so you're still getting that draw from the lead and it has two autos and activate main so the first one allows you to bring out something that normally a deck the deck wouldn't but this allows you to bring it out which is discard two cards from your hand as the cost when this card is placed in your leader area you get to play up to one ss3 broly saiyan berserker from your drop area and his permanent skill and if you don't know what that is that's the isr which we'll go over in a sec from set seven so you get in play that out and i had the permanent skill where you couldn't play it out unless all cards in your public areas were the same color as it which in this case is green and this ignore, ignoring it permanent means you can bring it out in this deck which you wouldn't normally do which is nice and this won't stick around so it would be nice to have a 30k base <laughs> leader for ages but it won't stick around because as soon as your opponent starts your main, your main phase this also triggers where at the start of your opponent's main phase you move this card from the game so this is a one use um z leader unlike some of the ones that are like permanent as soon as you drop them this day and it has a really nice activate main which triggers our secret rare as well which we'll see in a bit which is once per turn you place one non-black card from your battle arena zone as drop and nice that it says card so you don't have to be a battle card it could be an extra card or like an extra fill card and then you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, send it to his own drop, uh, warp, and then your opponent sends one card from the hand to the warp. So a bit of hand control and a bit of board control in that. And you will, you'll definitely have, as long as you bring out the Berserker, something to sack off for it. So that is the Z lead. So it acts a little nice little bit of pressure and gives you an, like a stronger like kill, kill turn and a kill play, which is very, very nice. And it's like unique to this. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the first three cards being the three black battle cards we play in the deck. Start off with the first two, which are the Supreme Card Time Guard Guardian of Space Time and Time Agent Trunks as well. So these are two cards from the starter deck. We play full four copies of it because where we've got a little bit of mill on the leader's front side, we want to try and make as much advantage of that as possible. And with another, uh, there's another card in here that also mills as well. We get some advantage off it. And not only that, the Trunks is main, mainly here for to get the advantage of the mill, whereas the Kai is just here because where the, the deck kind of has a low hand size, you can make use of your energy and not uh, your cards in your hand and not be whittled down by low combo power just because you have a low hand. Because both of them have the same effect, where well, the second auto anyway. Where if your life, is, if you're a black, lead, if you're a black Saiyan leader. When this card is placed in the drop area from your deck by a skill, you may place this card, play this card from your drop area. So the good thing about it is, uh, uh, Supreme Card Time as a, as a second auto, where if you have five or less cards in your hand, when this card is used in the combo, this card gives 5k combo power for the battle, meaning that's a free 10k if you have five or less cards in hand to help you out combo things um, while you're on low hand at easier weight rate. And the Trunks is a little bit different because it's a it's unique, so you can only control one at a time. So unlike the Kai, where you can have multiple. Uh, play multiple from board if you do. The time eight inch trunks you can only play one at a time. So if you've got one on board and you mill one, then you don't get to play the play the new one. But it does also have block and help defend the attack, and as a nice little way to help yourself awaken as quick as possible. But if this card is played, you play up to what you add up to one card from your life to your hand. So it helps you take your life to help you get the four as quick as possible if you mill it, which is quite nice. So play four four copies of this because we want that benefit of potentially hitting them and. At the very least, the Kai is useful later game that where the time, time agent trunks isn't. The time agent trunks are normally, normally going to be discard off effects or combat with, whereas the Kai is normally going to be here to protect yourself. Then moving to the last black, black battle card, we have well the next black, black, black battle card we have in the deck, which is our super combo. So I've gone for temporal rescue trunks, just for the fact that if I can't get down, to, if I'm not able to get down to. Um, if I'm not able to get down to four life quickly, I don't want to have a super combo that will not potentially draw me a card by um, requiring me to be four or less life. So say if I'm like struggling, I get the uh, awaken as quickly as possible. Then I want I want it, I really want something that actually can still get the draw and still be used against like potential aggro or like protecting my board or things like that. And I went more t temple rescue trunks because where you're milling off your lead a bit to try and self awaken and you can potentially combo out or like just struggle. This can help you get a draw without worrying about your life, just having five cards in drop to trigger a skill because it's a sparking five super combo. So with the super combo you can go whatever black super combo you want because you're going to need a black super combo for a black lead. Um, and I just went for this one, but you can chase if you want to have a different one. I just prefer this as well. And that is it for the black battle cards we have on the deck to support the, uh, support the black sand lead. So the only little ones. Now we go into the green cards. And first of all we're going to start with the priority package. So with the Broly package, we'll start off with the one straight from set one, and that is the one drop Broly Dawn of the Rampage. So this is a nice turn one play, and a searcher to help get that consistency and find the pieces of your um, Z, Z leader play. So this one is basically, when you play it, look at top seven cards of your deck, add one green Broly card among them to your hand, and shuffle your deck. So like you need a turn one play, because otherwise you're going to be wasting one energy. So we got this as one of the, I think, one of the three turn one plays you can do. And well, for that one energy, and this is quite nice. Just uh, find that find a consistency piece and then combo off if need be. And it's green for a charge as well because we're only going to be wanting the uh, charge green energy. Next, we go for the card that comes off the Z leader. We go to the second one, the one after it as well. So, this is these, this is the little combination you play. So, you have four copies of SS3 Broly Zen Berserker and four copies of Broly's, Broly's Supreme Berserker. So, Zen Berserker is the one that's listed on the Z lead that you can play out by its effect by discarding two to play it from drop, ignoring its permanent. And that's once again, as I said, because it's permanent, it's one of those ISRs where you need to have all like all cards in your public areas be the same color as the card itself, green. But then the Z lead ignores that, so you'd have to worry about it. And while it's got quite a few skills and a lot of text, the only skill that we're going to uh, trigger off it that's going to be relevant is the second auto, which is uh, when this card is, when you play it in this card. Choose up to one green Broly card from your hand with entry cost of seven or less and play it. And that's why we have the Broly uh, Supreme Berserker, because that's the target you're going to be playing. And this one is a 30k seven drop with barrier and critical. And it also has a nice little tasty auto that also, as I said, is the ever another way to trigger the mill 
because it's a once per turn burst five so you have to send the top five cards to your deck to your to your drop to be able to trigger this and it is when it when this card attacks if your leader is a broly card which is you choose one or two effects and now this depends on the hand size so if your opponent has three or less cards in hand you get to switch this card to active mode making it effectively a 30k critical dual attacker with barrier but if your opponent has four more cards in hand then they reveal their hand to you and you get to choose one card in it and your opponent places it in the drop area so you either get to rip any card from your opponent's hand while also looking at the knowledge or you get to have a dual attacking 30k now it's better to have the 30 30k attacking dual attacker because you're going to mainly keep because you're going to as a green deck well as a hand control deck you're going to be whittling the resources down keeping it low to basically make sure you can get some full benefit and reduce the amount of um options your opponent has to deal with your aggression and your um well what you're trying what you're trying to do in your plays and your attacks and the the only issue with these two is that where they're one cost 10k combos it can be quite dead in hands you've got a little bit of risk factor but the payoff is worth the risk now we've got another card that actually goes with the broly package that help that um, we can also play off our eight drop and that is two copies of broly invisible agent destruction now he's got a decent effect where he's played off that actually also helps with the little mill a bit where when this card is played you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and she costs five or less and kill it then look at up to three cards from the top of your deck add, add one card among them to your hand and place the remaining cards in the drop area so that's not too bad like you get removal in the fact that it pops like five or less you get a little bit of removal and then you get to look at the top uh, up uh, up to the top three cards of your deck so you can choose either zero one two or three you're always going to be choosing at least one because you don't have to you, you just add one card among them to your hand and whereas just add any card among them to your hand you'd have to show your opponent whereas the only time you would really have to show your opponent what you're adding is if the card has to be something specific like like if it's a green card you have to prove that it's green by showing it to your opponent but where you're just adding any card you don't have to show your opponent you just add to your hand and the benefit of this is where with the discard you can actually trigger the Kai and the trunks so if you use this effect and you look at the top three cards you look at all three and you say see you say it's like see you say your secret rare and a Kai and a trunks you can grab the secret rare and send the Kai and the trunks to the drop and when they've gone from the deck to the drop they then trigger the play themselves so you got a nice little benefit there and then we've got the activate main on it which is actually useful to retrieve your secret rare which we see in a sec which is activate main one discard this card from your hand as a cost so pay one discard this card from your hand add one card with agent instruction in its card name from your drop to your hand and that is because the secret rare we're playing is broly ulma agent destruction and once i said as i said the activate main on your z leader is a very easy way to play this and this has got a very strong uh, uh kill swing as long as you see a secret rare your same berserker and your seven drop you can go in for a very big aggressive push so that is that is why we run two of these because that way if you ever if your secret ever gets milled off some of your effects you can always grab it back with this and i like to have two copies just uh, for the chance of doing that and then we have broly all my destruction our secret rare so this is a 40k dual attacking double striker and it's easily played because of its skill which is when one of your green battle cards with energy cost of seven or more which these two meet the eight drop and the seven drop meet these requirements is moving your battle area by a skill or KO'd and remember that's just any skill either yours or your opponent's so that's why the ZD triggers it you activate the skill and that allows you to choose all other cards in your hand and just place them in the drop area and if you do you play this card from your hand so you need at least one other card in your hand along with the secret rare to be able to drop this but it just means that in a given turn you can drop the set you can uh, swing with the lead drop the z lead for a 30k double strike but also then playing out the eight drop who then plays out the seven drop swing with both of those sacking off the eight drop to play out to um, make them warp a card from hand and warp a card from board playing out the eight the secret rare and then getting two swings of that for a lot of aggression at big big uh, powers like at least 30k minimum for all these swings which is fantastic and this is only uh, this is only uh, I will say an option thanks to the Z lead the Z lead actually gave birth to all of this and that's why we play a copy of this and if you get that push down to one life as well you get the extra added benefit of this, the um, secret rare second auto which is when this card attacks if your life is at one your opponent chooses all other cards well all cards in hand and dis and discards them so you basically clear your opponent's hand with a swing where you're at one life which is very very nice so that is the Broly chain and some uh, well the Broly package and yeah it's quite a few cards but it adds nice little because he would get nibble uh brody dawn drawing in the cards and also a milling as well 
So you, most of these are retrievable too. And then we have next some of the green cards. So we've got first a card that helps us self awaken, being the Doria the Cold Blooded. This is very nice. I was playing on Friday the Dark Power Block Massaian because that helps more if your opponent sides in the board. And I didn't want to build a side deck because I was already playing a bootleg version where I didn't have some of the cards. Like I didn't have the Broly with one of the Rampage in my decks that I make do with replacing it with Bio Warriors at the time. And this is a nicer one because one, it's green, so it's a card you could sack off for lead as well. It helps yourself awaken, and also it's a card, that, a better card to charge in than that Dark Power Blast Saiyan. Because that Power Blast Saiyan is not a card you can sack off with the lead to get the the discard. And it's not a card you really want to charge because you want to only charge green. And Adori is able to charge his green, be able to use for the leader's effect, and also still self awaken. And even put more pressure on, and even clear more markers off units as well. Because you can always side the Dark Power Blast Saiyan. If uh, leaders, uh, a deck tries to side in the Bora, which not many are doing at the moment. And this is nice because you can add one card from your life to your hand when it's got attacks, gain, become a 15k double striker, which allows you to help move, knock markers off Unisons a little bit easier, while also allowing you to help self awaken, which you want to do as quickly as possible. So play full three copies of this. And the next one we have is a, nev is a nice little never turn one play, so probably Enter a nice turn one players. And the other turn one play we've got is Chi Lai Freeza 4 Soldier. This is a nice little thing for consistency because it's a cantrip when this guy's played draw a card. But it's also got a nice little X second effect in its activate main by paying one green and one of any other colour, so two energy. You choose up to one green freeze army card energy cost is two or less from your deck and play it and shuffle your deck. Now you can bring out this Deezer Door if you want to help self awaken off this, which is nice, but you're paying two energy for it. But at least you find it straight from the deck. Or you can play our next guy, which is Zarbon Cosmic Elite. And this one, with the leader's effect to sack off one of your non-black, non-token battle cards, can help you sack off more cards from your opponent's hand if they stay. So if your opponent gets at a high hand total, you can help rip it down a little bit easier using Zarbon. Because Zarbon's got a nice little effect where if your opponent has five or more cards in hand, when this card is removed from the battler by a, by a skill or kill, your opponent chooses one card in hand and discards it. So the only thing with this is your opponent needs to have six cards in hand to get the full effect of this with leader because when the leader swings it's auto is all one so when the auto resolves it then draws you a card allows you to sack off a card to make your opponent discard one and then Zarbon will trigger after to discard so if your opponent's at five cards in hand and you attack you discard another four this won't trigger Zarbon won't trigger them but if you swing with the Swing and they've got six cards in hand. They sky one, go down to five. Then Zarbon will still trigger because now they're still at five or hot or more. And Zarbon can easily be can be used in other ways because it's a blocker as well to help you defend some attacks. And it can be revived easily by just by paying one green, choosing a ca green card in your hand, and discarding it to play this card from your drop area, so you can keep reusing it to kind of help whittle down your opponent's hand uh, as much as possible, which is really nice. And then the reason we want a we want to really. Well, the next card is also allows you to help revive. If you ever, if you ever have like a clear board, and you want to, and you need a green card on board, one non-black card on board, or you want to get a Kai ready for to defend your next turn, and you want the battle cards on board, then we have the Hasty Dispatch Dispo to allow you to do that. Because this is a card where if you have no cards in your battle area, and you send this card from your drop area to your warp, you can choose one battle card, entry cost of one from your drop, play it with the skills to get for the turn. So even though while well, we won't have the skills in it for the turn, still if you've got nothing on board and this and drop and say one of these one drops, you can play it out using Dispo, then swing with your lead and still get the sack off that card to uh, make your opponent discard one. Or bring out the Kai just so you can have that as the use as a combo because it's only negated on, with the skills for the turn, so because your opponent's turn you then have the skills live again. So play two copies of that because at least that way it's a green card or if you mill it you can get that extra use if need be. And the reason we want to only really charge green cards is because of this little combo of Kaioken, Son Goku and the Furious and Fuse of Master Days Wrath. So this is a nice little combo where we play three free copies of these. So we play three copies of each. And Kaioken, it needs you to have mono green energy because it's activate main how you play it. For limit one, for one green. If you have three or more mono green energy, play this card from your hand. So once you get the free energy, as long as they're mono green, you get to play this out for one. And when it is played, you get the auto to trigger, which is when this card is played from your hand, your opponent discards one card from the hand. And this can help rip down quite a few cards from your opponent as well, in combination with Zamasu. Because you normally get the free energy, play this out for one, make him discard one and swing with this. And the relevant thing about this, this is a 15k crit. So 
you may can lose one card for playing it, swing at your opponent's lead, leaving it 15k crit to the 15k leader if they're awakened, and they're not going to want to take the crit swing stick out of combo, so that's a second card from the hand, or baiting out a super combo if they want to keep the cards in hand but use a uh, pistol combo out. And then you can use uh, Zamas who state his wrath, which has an activate main of 1, uh, where it requires 1 energy, if you have 3 or more energy, Choose one green battle card with in, well, choose green battle cards in your battle area with 5k power or more and a total energy cost of 5 and place them in your drop area to play this card from your hand. So essentially Kai Ken meets the requirements for the active main. So for two energy, you can pay out Kai Ken, Kai can make him discard. Discard one from playing it. Swing with it and make him combo a card from hand to reduce another card from hand. Then play out this Samasu takes wrath by second after Kai Ken. And then swing with it the trigger it's alter, which is when this card attacks, your opponent chooses one card in hand and place it in the drop area. So for those two energy with these two you can put in two swings, make them discard three cards, and then where Zamasu is a green card as well, you can then swing with lead to use to sack off the Zamasu to make your opponent discard another one. So potentially for two energy, you can make them discard four cards in a single turn and still have an energy open for any other play you might want to do or defense. And these are really nice because once again, like most of the green cards, they're just green to charge and they're very useful once you get to that game. And normally by turn um Maybe like turn three is normally when you're going to potentially go to Z lead, but you can also have this option if you don't want to go to Z lead when you want to like play a little bit slower. And then we have our overrun card being Dark Brody's uh, Heartless Berserker. This is a card that's really flexible. I like this one because it gives you a bit of board removal, which um, not not only just for the board removal, and it's also which when it's played, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards and warp it. But also because it's reusable after being overwhelmed as well, which is uh, for its activate main by paying two. If your opponent ha or if your leader is a black uh, black leader, you get to play this card from your warp for two energy. So you can get two use that you can overwhelm it, it gets it to warp, and then you can play it out again for a second use. And now it is it doesn't have any combo power, which is a downside, but it gives you that extra use of like having a free free of 30k beat state to play that warp stomach as well so warp out blocker to let your attacks go through and then if the if it's if you can do it in, if you're still around and still playing you can potentially bring it back when you warp to play again and it'll stay around after that unless it's popped now a good different one you can play is fame greeting because that adds to the hand control aspect have the same stats 30k same overrun being overrun six but it's also said is make your opponent warp a card from your hand when it's played and it's 5k combo, so it's got those little added benefits of adding more hand control and being a 5k combo, but then Dark Brony has the option of being a played out uh, for overall and then back again for just 2 energy, so it all comes down to personal preference. So I probably will switch to Fame Greeting, but I had a fun, um, well, trying uh, basically having this one. And that brings us to the last card in the deck, which is a token negate, which every deck's, every deck's playing a token negate nowadays, like it's playing like normally 2 to 3 cards in any deck, uh, copies anyway. And it's just more handy than I find than um, Power Burst, just for the fact that it can easy easily stop two attacks by just negating the attack with the use of it, use of it, and then it but, but then it plays out a token, which then has blocker to help block another attack, which Power Burst. You can negate one attack and grab a Kai, but then the next attack you're gonna have to out combo, which there's potential that you might not be out of combo even by getting back a Kai, whereas. Support the Dark Empire is neat one attack and then have the token to block the second attack and then you need to make a third attack to try and get through. So we play four copies of this because it's just really useful and you want it for that little bit of defense as well. And plus if your opponent's trying to take you down from five to three with a double striker, you can use this to stop it, put yourself down to the exact force, you can awaken and have and even then the token is also a 5k combo as well. If so if you don't block with it and it's still around, you can use it as a combo piece if need be. And that is the list, that is the deck, as I said, the probably only changes I would potentially make is maybe cutting the Dark Brody out for Fame Greeting, but the rest of it I'm um, pretty happy with. Might up the Dodoria maybe a little bit, might take down one token to gate for Dodoria, um, but I'm not sure yet. But also along with that I do have the side deck, so one thing I do want to... Um, I do want to say is shout out to Q8 for my stream. He did mention about uh, that I probably should run one copy of Freeza Resurrect Ambition because I wasn't running it before because I was trying to run a full four copies of the Broly of the Broly Z battle card because it's just that great. But he did mention that um, it'd be handy for the double strike because there's not many things in this deck apart from the secret rare and the Z lead have double strike. So this could be a little bit useful, uh, a little bit more useful to close the games with the double strike just comboing up on it as well and adds a little bit more hand control 
with Swing with Sign Chaos White's on the board, that's green. So for the Z deck, we've got one copy of the SSB Vegeta. Uh, Vegeta has extra hand control that you've always got access to because your Z deck is like an extension of your hand because it's always accessible as long as you've got the Z energy and the energy cost to play for it. And it just helps me uh, awaken and try and get more cards by taking a card from life and also replacing a card from my hand, putting back in a deck like a Trunks if I got it in hand to then have it in the deck to mill. Then we've got the Z lead. So this is the Z lead. As I said, we've gone over this. So this is the way you bring out the 8 drop by using the first alter, discard two cards from your hand. And the thing with this is you can just mitigate the cost for that effect. You can always discard the 8 drop off that effect. So discard the 8 drop of certain kills to then play back out the 8 drop. So you kind of mitigate how much you're discarding. So you're technically only discarding one to play out this 8 drop from hand. And it's just it's just so powerful to this playoff. And then we got the SSZ or oh, SS Broly the Demon Revive. So this is the second card that got that wasn't that wasn't direct support like the Z Battle card, but direct support for all Broly decks. Because it's a two cost, 15k would that requires one Z energy. Also, it's got a permanent where if your leader is a Broly card, you know it's uh, card specified cost in all areas, and this card can't be KO'd by skills what's in a battle area. So that's a nice little benefit of um not worrying about these specified skills you play in Broly and support for every Broly lead. And it's got some nice effects in both his auto and his activate main. So his auto is when this card attacks, you use up to one red or green card with a 5k combo power from your drop in a, com in a combo with the skills you get for the turn. And if you have four or fewer cards in your hand, you draw one. So this helps what if you have a quite a low hand to get down to four, you can start drawing your hand back up a little bit more. So if you've got four cards in hand, swing with this, combo sync, draw up another one to so go to five. And then swing with lead to draw number six, you can kind of raise your hand a little bit higher while also minusing it. Because you do have to minus yourself from hand for its activate main, but its, it's effect is actually quite useful. Because it's got utility. So it's once per turn, you discard one card from your hand as a cost. So you can help put stuff in your drop, like you put the eight drop in your drop through this effect if you want to. And the effect is you add up to one card from your hand to your life, so more self-awakening. And then you choose one or two effects. You either make your opponent discard one card from hand, or you choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards with 20k power or less and KO it. So you got a nice either a little bit of a removal or extra discard, which is actually fantastic. And especially since like you're normally going to want to play one of these out turn two, so you have it ready. So to turn three, you can either do your kayak and like kind of reduce the hand a little bit more, or go into your Z lead play to kind of push quite hard, uh, very quickly. But that is the decks. We also yeah, as I said, we got the freezer, which gives you a double strike, a little bit of removal, and a bit more hand control in its second auto, which uh, is quite nice. And I do have a uh, side deck as well, so I do have a side deck that's been built quickly. I'm not a big fan of playing a unison in here, with, even though charismatic is quite useful. I'm not a big fan of playing charis uh, the unison in there, because the unison adds, adds to more dead cards in hand. And considering the fact we already have some cards like the um, Saiyan Berserker and Supreme Berserker, uh, oh, this 8 drop and 7 drop, which both require one energy, uh, one, 1 energy to combo f with it for a 10k. They can be dead in hand when you're tapped out, and you're normally going to be tapping out to do your plays. Uh, I don't want to add more cards that are dead in hand with the um, with the unison. So I've decided not to include that in the side and go for something more interesting. So I've gone for the four copies of Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, because uh, that's just to help for if your opponent sides in the... Um, Deborah, you can have this as your one that self awakens if they do drop the Deborah off of any things. They draw two, but then you want two from the Dark Power Black Mass Aim. So you're not too worried about them drawing back up because they're gonna want, they're not gonna gain anything just play the Deborah. Then we've got two quartz cards as well, so if we get any decks that are playing floodgates, like um Mecha Freeze and stuff like that, it adds to the hand control by uh, helping you fix your hand while also making it so if they want to play anything during your turn it's twenty K or less when you're attacking, trying to push through, then, or try to flood get you, then they're going to be punished with the hand a bit more. And then we've got Black Smoke being one of the new cards of set 19, so this is prepared for set 19. This is a nice little utility where either, when you play it, you get to choose one of three effects. You either place up three cards from the top of your deck to your drops, so they kind of help mill and get some more effects. And if there's seven or more in all drops, which there hopefully should be, you draw two cards, so either draw two. Or you get barrier removal with second one, which is choose one of your opponent's battle cards for seven cards or less, ignoring barrier and sets to warp. Or you get the help deal with unisons that specify cost of two or less, with the third effect being choose up to one of your opponent's unisons with a specified cost of two or less, and seven or few markers on and sets to the warp. So it's a nice little utility, so we don't e always include two, because then it's a combo card from board and has three great effects. And not only that, we also have Yamshida Cunning. So I was going to put Yamshida Cunning in, but we'll probably put in 
this deck has a decent enough time with blue, but this is more for if your um, opponent can like stall you, like stall you out and hold off. You don't want to get slapped down with the Kaioken that untap all their energy. So we've got the Yamcha to add to it, and plus it's green, a green useful green card to add in. Then we've got one copy of Tactical Victory um, Vegeta, because one thing that can really, really ruin this strategy is um, uh, Tragedy Overground, which you can hopefully pull off beforehand, before they get that, but also some Everfield card strategies you might want that potentially come up as well. Green has a nice way to pop in with this Tactical Victory Vegeta. Just when it's played, choose one field card on the board, uh, and you, well, I think one of your opponent's field cards, yeah, and your opponent's battle area field card, and, and place it in the drop. Then we've got Defender of Justice being just our um, unstoppable negate for it against decks that want to play counter counters and push for that. One commemorative photo because if you're playing a green deck, you kind of want to play one commemorative photo. And we got two pretty black hole. This is quite a nice one that you can side in because um, where you can play the eight drop off the Z lead, you can use it for quite a bit of a nice board wipe because pretty black hole reads as. Counter attack, negate the attack, then you may choose one of your battle cards, negate your skills, and place it in the drop area. Now, the 8 drop's perfect for that because it's got no other skills after you drop it, and so it's like perfect to use for this. And it's 8 cost, so it can add more to what the next part is. And if you do sack off a card, then you draw one card, then choose any number of your opponent's non token battle cards with energy cost, total energy cost less than or equal to the energy cost of the card you placed in your drop area with skills, and then KO them. So if you use this to sack off an 8 drop, you replace this card in your hand by drawing a card, and then you get the pop up pop cards in your opponent's board that are up to cost 8. So 2 4 drops, or just any, up to 8 cost to just remove, which is actually really, really nice. And then there's the 8 drops back in your drop ready to play off and never see lead if you want to go again and do that. So I thought this was quite a nice one, because it's not restricted to a, a green leader, just... Yeah, just one green energy, which you're going to be charging green anyway. And I may up, up this to uh, like another one copy put in, and maybe tweak the side deck, but I thought this side deck seemed quite useful. So that is it for me today. Um, so that is the Black Broly list. Like, I hope, If you want to give it a try, go ahead and give it. The link to the link uh, deck list will be in the description below. So you can always check out, try it on Untap, or even build it yourself, and have a load of fun with it. So with the... But, before we end it, just going to go over the main play. So what you want to mainly do with this deck is get to turn three. And if you've milled your secret rare, you can always use this um, free drop Broly to grab it back from your drop. But mainly what you want to do is reduce the cards in your hand and then try to see if you can establish a green battle card on board. So then you can swing with lead, use your lead's effect, the draw card, and you sack off that green battle card. And then in the combat, send two, tap two, send two cards and use the energy to your drop to play your Z lead. And then it's going to trigger the first auto to be able to, um, here, to discard two cards, hopefully being one 8-drop, to then play out the 8-drop. And then this 8-drop will then go ahead and play the 7-drop. And you'll be swinging at 30k double strike base here to put two damage through. Then you'll be swinging with the 7-drop, the trigger's effect, either depending on the hand, either look at the hand, rip a card from a hand, or be able to uh, swing, like restand and swing again. Then swing with the 8 drop, then if you've got the secret rare in your hand, you can then use the effect of lead. The sack off this 8 drop to make him warp 1 from hand and the battle card on board. Then drop the 8 drop and then swing with that as well. Like you lose your hand for that, but hopefully they'll either be losing their hand or going for game because hopefully with the set, either they have limited in how many cards they got in hand. Or, like, so either at 3 or less, you can get 2 swings from the 7 drop, so you're, you're like staying at 3 less cards of hand to help them have a trouble defending against it. Or you're then dropping this to put even more pressure on, and if you've got anything else left on board, or you had a Kai Ken, you've put more pressure on Over Realm, you've then got more added to that. So that is the deck and the play. So yeah, you can do it as a listen to. Normally, turn one, you can be, as I said, playing a one drop, either a Broly Dawn to help try and find the pieces you need, play a Chi just so you can get a cantrip, or getting this Doria on board to help um, self awaken a little bit quicker. And then turn two, you're normally going to want to come combo either aggressively or defensively to get that one Z energy. So you on turn two you can get this Broly out to help self weaken a little bit more and maybe if you've got a low hand size draw it back up and have that extra Broly there to just make get the hand by make, discarding a card to make them discard a card as well. And that's the deck. So if once again thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. If you like the list remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.